Hello everyone, we're reporting again from Toronto, Ontario from the Alzheimer's Association International Conference giving you an update from a session that I just came out on. The topic of today's session was uh, whether people are at higher risk uh, for dementia and cognitive impairment after surgery. In the past two years, research has shown that elderly individuals, those who are above the age of 60, 65, tend to have higher risk of developing dementia after surgery. In the past year or two, the thought was that women actually had a higher risk for developing dementia after surgery. But today's session, the overall um, uh, idea was that uh, women are not at a high risk, that you know, when you adjust for different uh, genetic factors and for lifestyle risk factors, men are actually at a higher risk of developing it. And so the conclusion was more research needs to be done, especially the ones that actually follow patients forward, prospective studies and um, that it's a very interesting question. A lot of different anesthetic agents were looked at to see whether one anesthetic agent had you know, more effect, more um, uh, influence on cognitive impairment or not, and the results were not very clear. Yeah, uh, this is a very important question because we believe that Alzheimer's and dementia in general is a disease uh, that is uh, consequent to multiple factors. It's a <clears throat> poly-hit phenomena your risk of genetic risk, your lifestyle reserves or what you've done throughout life as far as uh, food, exercise, all these other variables as well as some major uh, uh, events in your life such as major surgeries that put you at greater risk or lesser risk. <clears throat> For the past few years we've looked at and we all had this suspicion because we've had patients, elderly patients that went into the surgery and after surgery they were not quite the same and this was consistently seen. Or they were what they called delirious for a period and they went back to normal, but we thought that later on that actually conferred greater risk for dementia. We still think that there's a factor there, there that surgery for a certain population has greater risk. That's where you're, what you heard and others are saying that this has to be teased out better. It might not be a gender factor. It might be the fact that the people that had less reserve Reserve is the kind of uh, cognitive capacity that you've built throughout life. You the, know, from the a, resilience. Resilience, have, exactly. Yes. The education, the connectivity, um, the, the vascular risk that you've actually avoided because of exercise and all these things that give you the ability to withstand certain uh, factors such as major surgeries. And for those who haven't built that reserve, that resilience, they're at much higher risk. They're at the precipice. They're at the edge that any major surgery, imagine go, you're 75, 80 years old and going through a six hour surgery, that would put you at much higher risk. So although today again <clears throat> we, uh, we went back and forth, I think what we suspect, both of us, is that when you look at reserve as determined by education, by um, uh, level of activity throughout life and how you've lived, that actually separates out and gives you a better picture into this. And this is important. Why is this important? Because there's a lot of surgeries that are done later in life that are not urgent, mm -hmm. that, are, that are more elective. And, and for elderly population, there's a significant amount of those surgeries that can be done either locally or can, that can be done electively. We have to tease that out. We have to figure out who needs those surgeries. Um, and that can delay the disease by years or maybe avoid it altogether. Absolutely. And also what I find very necessary and interesting is to categorize patients earlier before surgery to find out who may be at a higher risk, you know, depending on the diseases that they've had, like diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and also the amount of experiences and education that confers to brain resilience Absolutely. and brain protection. So kind of creating a category of patient or being able to categorize patient very well to say, you know, this patient may be safe going forward with the surgery or on the other side, this patient may not be, um, you know, may not fare well after right. a specific procedure. So that's something that we need to work on and, you know, there were great researchers and scientists working on that topic and it was quite helpful. Correct. Um, this is precision medicine where we were, it was, uh, up to now it's been blunt. You have dementia, if, you know, you fall into this big category, in fact, Alzheimer's in general, 
It's a big category that we know is made out of many smaller categories, some subtypes. So the precision will come as this person with this background, with this kind of biomarkers, is at risk of developing Alzheimer's if they do X, Y, and Z, and there are, they can avoid Alzheimer's and dementia if they do these categories of activities. So that's why it's really important to tease this out. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us, and we will keep you guys updated. Have a great day. Thank you.